next guest calls it a reality check. Avery Sheffield, co-founder, CIO, and senior portfolio manager of Vantage Rock. Back at, at Post Nights. Good to see you again. Really a pleasure to be here. What is the reality check? That you've got to really, really deliver or you're going to get your valuation really, really slammed? A Absolutely. I mean, the market's in a very different place than it was even several months ago. Uh, and we're seeing it with Netflix, of course, being a, a, key, um, a, a key example. Snapchat today had a little bit better results, so, that, so they aren't getting hit as much. Um, but you really have to deliver if you have a value, high valuation. What does it mean for the overall growth trade? On a day where we had this big reversal, you've got rates, I said the 10-year, approaching 3% again. That make it especially difficult for that trade to work? I, I I think the growth trade is going to be difficult for a long time, um, just given given where rates are at, given inflation, but also very importantly, the inflecting uh, fundamentals of many of the very most successful growth stocks over the past ten years. Slow growth in the economy. Don't I want to own tech in that environment? Or I mean, I'm sure you want to own some. Or you just say blanket, forget tech growth, period. Well, I mean, I would say you want to own really stable businesses at a very reasonable price because valuation really matters. And so where we've been looking are companies that have that stability, that have those those sticky characteristics of, of many tech companies, maybe though are slower growth, but are priced for no growth at all. Like that's where we see real opportunity for asymmetry. The market in general today. How does it feel to you? You said things have changed a lot in just a couple of months, right? You were, you were last here, I don't know, a month ago. Um, are things that different today than they were then? I think the trends that we've seen are continuing, um, maybe accelerating a bit at the moment. I mean, you never know when we're going to see a bear market rally and people get excited about something. But I think that just this continual increase in focus on fundamentals is really going to matter. And if you look at even the, what's happened today in the market, you know, one of the top performing stocks today outside of the airlines was AT&T. No one's talking about that. The stock was up 4%. It's up like 9% year to date with the, with the S&P down. It's one of the most boring stocks in the world. But actually, they have strong results and their competition is less. And that's where I think you can, the valuation is very low. That's the kind of place I think you can find opportunity. What about, you know, other so-called defensive trades, you know, things with yield, um, utility staples? Because there's been a suggestion, too, that those have run so much that they're out of gas. I would agree that any stock that's trading at a higher valuation um, is vulnerable. So as long as the as long as the fundamentals continue, I mean, we've seen that w there's still enthusiasm out there, right? Um, that's leading to these higher valuations. As long as the fundamentals continue to be strong, um, you could see those valuations continue to move up. But uh, but. I but I think there's real vulnerability in any stock um, that's trading at a high valuation if it's not able to deliver. So the asymmetry, I think, is moved more to the downside for those types of names. What about cyclical stocks? And then there could be a number of different sectors that we talk about, industrials yes. or, you know, semis have shown some signs of, of cracking. You know, Kramer had a really interesting tweet about Lamb Research, and that stock was down today. Sort of the market ignoring that for most of the day, not so much anymore. Is that a warning sign we need to pay attention to? I think, I mean, the cyclical semis in particular tend to still be quite expensive. I think that's why they're more vulnerable and people are worried about the downside. Where I think there's potential for real upside, and I spoke about this last time, is in sectors that are already being priced for a significant recession, right? So you're still you're seeing that in a lot of the consumer discretionary names. Those are areas that are interesting. You know, potentially some of the auto the traditional auto manufacturers might end up surprising to the upside because they're already being priced for a significant recession. Wow, because I just wonder, you know, people are wondering about, you know, autos topping, how housing topping, you know, the consumer yes. getting tapped out because of inflation. Yes. Well, so autos at the low end, I mean, used cars are clearly under pressure, as we saw, mm -hmm. you know, with Carvana. Um, and, and we've seen with the other used car dealers or even the, the traditional dealerships, we're still seeing a lot of strength in the new car side. Um, it was certainly exemplified by Tesla's very strong results. And so uh, companies, car companies that are at very low valuations might continue to surprise to the upside because of the supply demand imbalance. Similarly, in the housing market, um, you could potentially see home builders do well. Now, you know, you had TriPoint report this morning, very solid results, stock down because people are concerned about rising rates, what's going to happen. But you'll get to a certain point where the valuation of these stocks are so low and the supply demand imbalance is still so significantly in their favor. There might be upside opportunity there.